These little cameras are so incredibly... But real quick, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video and let you know, if you didn't already know, that April is Financial Literacy Month. You know, financial literacy, that, that skill that is like a detrimental life skill, but for some reason, they don't teach you in school. Well, fortunately, Wealthfront makes it simple and easy for anyone to start investing and saving, regardless of how much you know about investing and regardless of how much money you make. Because I know investing is super intimidating and a lot of people don't know where to start. All you have to do is answer a couple questions and Wealthfront will build and manage a personalized investment portfolio for you. Here are just a couple things that Wealthfront does to make this process really easy. They have expert built portfolios that you can further customize based on your interest and your values. They can help you set up automated recurring payments. That way your portfolio is constantly growing and it removes the emotion out of the equation. It's essentially like hiring a personal financial advisor, but with a much cleaner user interface zero phone calls, and a fraction of the cost. Just remember, everybody's investment journey is different. There's no need for you to compare yours to anyone else's. Open an investment account today by going to wealthfront.com slash alpha gaming, or just use the link in the description down below and get your first $5,000 managed for free. Okay, let's go. Hey. You wanna go with me? Go outside, go to the park? Good boy, let's go. Good boy, okay. Ready? Come on, dude. Let's go. That's a good boy. Goodness. Maybe that's why he's so slow. I didn't bring it back. I'm gonna wash my hands later. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> there we go. It's a lot, dude. <laughs> Done my civic duty. <laughs> duty. <laughs> I cracked myself up. So I brought you guys outside because I felt like we all could touch a little bit more grass. But also, because I need to run one more test on this thing. This is the Mevo Start. It is Logitech's uh, simplified streaming solution. Is that fair? I think that's probably the best way to describe it. It is a little streaming cam, super lightweight, super high quality, but it does one thing that is so cool that I really wanna show you. And my dog keeps getting lost. He's so excited to be outside. Neko, there's a good boy. I have on me not just one, but two of these little cameras because they come in a pack of three if you want. That You can also get them in a pack of one, but you can get them in a pack of three and they all connect to your phone where you can switch POVs from different cameras and you can switch, like basically you've got a mobile multi-camera streaming setup with just these. Most people don't even have multi-camera streaming setups in their massive stream rooms. And you can do it here on your phone. It's really cool. Let's get it set up real quick. Okay, so we turn it on. How can I set this thing? <laughs> Something like that. Huh? Yeah, that'll work. Let me open up the app. And now we've got two cameras. These two cameras right here that I can switch back and forth between. And they're in really great sync too. Like this is really impressive. These two are perfectly in sync. You can see if I wave in one, it waves in the other at the exact same time. It's pretty great. So this is what I wanted to test here. If I were to take this one with me, how far can I go until I start to lose the signal from this one? So I switched the recording over to this one, two cameras at the same time. You can see how far I'm getting. So far, it still looks good. I don't see any problems. Still going strong. It says you can get up to 100 feet on these. I don't know how much I trust that, but maybe I should. I think I'm at least a third of a football field, which is the only way I can gauge 100 feet. Let's keep going. Camera's all the way over there on that post. And the signal's still going pretty strong. Do you know how cool this would be for group streaming events 
either in foreign countries or at conventions, you and all your friends can each have one camera. I know you can connect at least three because you can buy them in a group of three. I don't know if you can get more than that. I didn't check. But like, imagine if like the Senpai crew all went to TwitchCon and we all had little cameras on the day that we were free and we just walked around and one person could switch back and forth between the different POVs. How cool would that be? Or even if you're just one person, you get two of these, you have one in your hands and then one is a POV over your shoulder so you can see forward and you can see yourself. Little guy, you did a great job on those. That was weird. I don't have available hands. So yes, I think these could be amazing tools for IRL streaming, but more so than that, I think, and maybe I'm optimistic here, I think this shows potential to completely change the way we stream and also completely change how much we spend on streaming setups. I wanna get into that. This lighting just got ridiculously harsh and I've spent way more than my allotted outdoor time out here today. So we're going back inside. Ready to go home? Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Good boy, buddy. Let's go. Come on. So, look, before, before we talk about the thing that gets me excited about this, let's talk about the bad stuff. That's what, I mean, that's what you guys are here for anyway. I got a whole list here. It's called Mevo Bad Stuff. Let's talk about these. First of all, if you're using your phone as the app, like I showed you earlier outside, your phone becomes inoperable. You can't exit the app. If you exit the app, stream dies, which adds another bummer because as far as I could find, there's no chat inside the app. So you can't be reading chat on your phone if you're using your phone to stream. Both of these are remedied by using a separate device to stream, which is kind of a bummer, but I feel like it's what I do anyway. Like if I were to go and do this, I'd want to be able to use my phone normally and not have it be my streaming device. So I think I'd have like an iPad mini that I kept on me somewhere and then use my phone for chat and for texting and for anything else that I would normally use my phone for. But it's still kind of a bummer for the people who don't have another device and just want to use their phone. Uh, next problem, the cameras themselves are kind of limited. For example, I mean, this is $400 and the group of three of them is $1,000 and the camera is only 1080 30. Now, I mean, it's not a huge deal. Most vlogs that you see on YouTube are done in 1080-30, so it's not a huge problem, but I feel like for $400, I feel like you should get at least 1080-60, you know? Also, there's no swappable lenses or anything, which is, again, kind of a bummer. I actually wanted it to be a little bit wider, and just to test it, I went and I picked up a little lens attachment that doesn't go onto, the, it doesn't fit on this. I had to hold it with my hands. It normally goes on a different camera, but it made the camera wider and I really, really liked it. So I'm a little bummed that I'm stuck with only one camera POV, like one field of view. But like still nothing so far has been a deal breaker. Like the simplicity of how this works still outweighs some of these barriers, some of these problems, right? The real problem for me comes with the fact that there is no solid streaming software. Like that's the deal breaker for me. There's no OBS. You can't have any kind of scene control or any kind of graphics. You can't have alerts. Like that's kind of a big one for me. You can't put alerts on there. Technically you can because you can stream to an RTMP server, which means if I wanted to stream TwitchCon with this and I wanted to have alerts, which is a big deal for me, I would have to start from my hotel room, set up a laptop, start it streaming and receiving as an RTMP server. Then when I was ready to use this, switch to this, stream it to my computer and have my alerts going on my computer. And at that point, the whole purpose of this is to make a super simplified streamline experience and now it's more complicated than streaming from anything else. And that's weird to me because like I feel like that should be the easiest one for them to solve. Like Logitech owns this. And you know what else Logitech owns? Streamlabs. And you know what Streamlabs has? An iOS app. Like why would you make a completely separate third party app for these? Why wouldn't you just allow this to feed into Streamlabs iOS? That seems like such a no-brainer. Give us all the OBS tools that you've already built and let us use this camera and connect to it. So I don't know what the technical limitations are, why they didn't do that, or if it's just two different departments that don't talk to each other enough. But if I could have my perfect version two of this, I would first have a front mount system. Could be super simple magnetic mount system so I could change how wide the camera angle was and I would update the software to be as close to a mobile version of OBS 
as possible. Because with those little, little fixes being done, if you can run a solid stream off this device, do you realize what you accomplish? And this is what I'm so excited about. What we do with that is we eliminate the need for this. Like seriously, you could have a multi-camera stream going in your room with no need for a PC entirely. And with how streaming is already moving, it, it is becoming more and more supplementary content, IRL stuff and just chatting stuff, stuff that doesn't require a massive PC is exploding to be able to pick up a couple small cameras connected to a mobile device and go live with a professional stream completely lowers the barrier of entry for all these content creators that just want to try streaming and don't want to buy a $2,000 PC. I see solutions like this becoming kind of the norm in the industry as streaming becomes not only more widely accepted by all content creators as something we should all be doing, but also as we begin to accept that full-time streaming is a is just terrible on our mental health and it should be something we do a couple times a week and we shouldn't be investing in massive streaming setups in order to just accommodate a small chatting stream like this. I think these things are gonna be perfect. Not these ones, this isn't perfect. Maybe the next version. But tell me if you think I'm wrong. I very well might be. I'm, I'm wrong very often. <laughs> I just get excited of the idea that anyone can start streaming and anyone can add to this ecosystem as we lower that barrier of entry to pick up a camera, turn it on, connect it to your phone, and go live. Like that seems, that seems awesome to me. Hit the like button if you're still around, because if you're still watching at this point, I know you liked the video and I, I forgot to tell you earlier, that's probably gonna hurt this thing. Anyway, it's the way it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the camera. And as always, happy streaming.